If the gospel is to believe in Jesus, and the Bible shows us that Jesus himself also preached the gospel, then what was the gospel in Jesus' mouth? The gospel in our mouth is to believe in Jesus. Correct. Accurate. Now what was the gospel in Jesus' mouth? Did Jesus go around telling people, believe in me, believe in me? What was the gospel? Repent for the kingdom of heaven. Huh? Meanwhile, when you hear repent as a Gentile man, it's different from what a Jewish man heard as repent. Repent for a Jewish man is turn back to Torah. It's not to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That was not repentance in the ear of a Jewish man. There was a reason why the Messiah was sent. And I will, I will not tell you, I will leave you to go and do your study. From a Jewish perspective, what was the Messiah to accomplish? So repentance in the ear of a Jewish man is different from repentance in the ear of a Christian. And when Yeshua came, he was preaching the good news of the kingdom of God and calling people to repent so that they could be a part of that kingdom of God. Now let me give you an expo. The kingdom of God is actually a life. It represents a type of life. Kingdoms are what bet cultures. Every kingdom has a culture. Do we agree? The Benin kingdom has the Benin culture. The Odudua kingdom has a culture. Too. So every kingdom, the Igbo kingdom, have a culture. So it is the culture that identifies the kingdom. When people hear kingdom, they are seeing flags and military men. However, in the sight of Jesus, the kingdom of God coming to earth is a culture built around the will of God. He said, thy will be done on earth as it's done where? Heaven is his kingdom. So his will rules supreme in the kingdom of heaven. And so he's saying, bring that operation to earth because it's already existing in heaven. So the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God in the air of a Jewish man or repentance, sorry, in the air of a Jewish man meant living your, your sinful ways and sin in the eyes of a Jewish man is transgressing the law. First John says, sin is a transgression. To sin against the word of God. To go against what God has ordained. Now, what does Torah mean? Torah means the instruction. And in that instruction, you find life. Torah is like a manual. This is why I don't believe as a that anything in the New Testament contradicts the Old Testament. It's just a matter of honesty. Everything is one in harmony. I would together that because God cannot contradict it. God cannot refuse a standard and then let us, okay, I change the standard now. Let's use another one. Okay, but the Bible said the law is abolished. No, the law has been taken beyond what it was. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. You've heard, don't commit adultery. I say to you, don't even look at the woman lost for you. Guess what? He has rendered useless the former one. Because he has taken it a step higher. That's it. That's the teaching of Jesus. You've heard, don't kill. I'm telling you, don't be angry with your brother for no reason. Guess what? Don't kill has been rendered useless because he has taken it a step higher. Before the laws were written on tablets of stone, he said, now it's your heart. We worship God in temple, he said, now it's in the spirit. He has taken it a step higher, rendering all the old operations useless. Why? Because they were not actually effective. You understand? So when Yeshua said, don't think I've come to destroy the law, the word interpreted there means to loosen, to make a light. Don't think I've come to make it a little easier. No, I have come to fulfill it, to bring it to its full extent. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. So when I hear Christians say, but the law has been abolished. No, no, the law has been rendered useless because something greater has come. If not, how would John, who was a Jewish man, be still telling you sin is a transgression of the law? If the law is useless already. But we in Christ, by the spirit of holiness, we've gone past the things that were written for the Israelites. The things we operate in, there is no law against. So Yeshua looked at them. I said, the summation of all this law you people follow is simply love. Love God, love man. Thou shalt not kill, love man. You won't kill man. Thou shalt not steal, love man. You won't steal. And everything is summed up in love. If you love your fellow man, you will do nothing to hurt them. If you look at the teachings of Jesus, it was a gospel that embodied the character of the kingdom he was calling men. And when man has entered into the kingdom, it will be reflected in the way he treats his fellow men. So all Jesus thought about was how to treat your fellow man. Is that not what he thought about? So what else? You begin to see that his gospel was geared, was guiding us towards a life that manifests love, demonstrated in the way we, we relate with other people. And he said, this life, you cannot achieve it in its fullness if you don't come. So following Jesus is not just following a person. It is following a type of life. This life 
He demonstrated it. So if you see the ministry of Jesus, it was all about pleasing God and helping mankind. That was all. He was so moved by love that even the people that killed him, he prayed good prayers for them. He said, this, don't, don't hold it against them. They are ignorant, that's why they are doing it. They don't know better. The Bible would tell us that he looked upon Israel and he had compassion on them. They were like sheep without shepherds. So if you say, I follow Jesus, I know God, and yet you are not in that life that he brings, First John says, you've never met God. What we've made the gospel to be today is trust system. This is our system here. And then the character of the gospel has been booted out. So Yeshua, when they asked him, we are telling ten us to love our neighbors. Who is our neighbor? He now brought a parable of a man who was beaten and thieves robbed him and he was left for dead. And then a, a, a prophet like me now passed, looked at him and said, Kaika, uh, this man is talking as that dropped him. I have a conference to catch up with. Meanwhile, in the sight of God, your church at that time is to help that brother. That's your church. Another reverend came and looked at him said, look at all these people. If they hear God like me, they won't fall into this trouble. He went for his power and prophetic conference <laughs> and left that man for dead. And then the Samaritan that is smoking the bow was smoking Igbo and saw the guy say, Kai, Kai, he put off his Igbo, he helped the man. Took him to hospital, took his money, paid for the man. Jesus said, that's the Christian. <laughs> I know a religious man now is campering that, okay, no, but there must be a balance. There's no balance. That's the Christian. Jesus taught a practical gospel. We will practice an imaginary gospel. You know, portals are real. You've not fed your brother. You're talking about portal. Is it jam portal you're talking about? I was lamenting today. I say, Lord, the face of what you started building, if you see what it is today. Today we can threaten people to pay tithe and if they don't pay tithe, God wants to give. Where do we even get all this gospel? And if you saw, talk, they'll say, are you greater than this father? That's, that's a man who has not been caught up by the Lord. Has been caught up by men. Nobody raised me, so nobody can pull me down. <laughs> God raised me.